the tantric sexual practice is allowing it to happen without forcing sexual relationship in any way. And this means, therefore, that uh, it, it tends to be a, a sexual uh, type of relationship which you could call contemplative rather than active. If you see the statues of uh, tantric figures, by and large, the male figure is seated in the lotus posture like a Buddha, like the Buddha here. The female sits right on his lap, wraps her legs round his waist and her arms round his neck. And they touch at all points, the mouth, the breasts, the sexual organs, the eyes looking straight into each other. But they're motionless. They're completely still. They don't, in other words, uh, work towards A, an, an orgasm. See, Freud had the idea that sexual pleasure is release from tension. That uh, what we work towards is the orgasm as detumescence, as escape from tension. But many people would disagree most strongly with this and say that's part of it, but that it is just as wonderful for there to be tension without any attempt to escape from it. Maintain the tension as long as possible. Uh, and in, in any case, don't try to get into it. Just let it happen. That is the attitude of these sexual images and of the sexual yoga. To let it happen. And to be completely still and completely open and aware And if you do this, you find a very strange thing happens. You will become the other person. And you will experience yourselves as a single organism where the two bodies literally melt into each other. It's as if there is electric currents or something in our bodies which ordinarily uh, bat against each other. But in this way of sexual yoga the two currents become a single current and it's exactly melting is the only way I could describe it the best metaphor the two bodies fuse now there are certain different schools of thought about this uh, Some say that in the tantric exercise there is no orgasm. It is entirely what's called coitus reservatus, that, uh, or karetsa, to use the Persian word. And that the sexual energy is thereby transmuted into spiritual energy. Some say, you know, you arouse the sexual energy, but instead of dissipating it, you send it up the spinal column into the brain. <clears throat> you all know, presumably, the symbolism of yoga, of the kundalini, that at the base of the spine there is the call the, the serpent. Kundalini, the serpent power. And that the object of yoga is to send your concentrated energy down your spine to knock on that snake's head and say, wake up, man, go up the tree. And the snake wakes up and he goes slowly up the spine, energizing each chakra or center of nervous, uh, nervous telephone exchange. Each one, as he gets into it, boom, a new world is open to you. Boom, boom. Finally, he gets into the thousand-petal lotus in the head. And then everything is lit up. You know all things. And eventually, he goes out through the top of the head, where there's the sun door. The head corresponds to the firmament of heaven. The sun is the door in the firmament through which you see into the transcendental world. And the snake goes out that door and you are liberated. That's why yogis are always drawn with uh, above their skull a bump here or a flame. And that's why the, the dome of a church 
has a spire on top of it, you see? Or a lantern. That's the sun door, the exit. So the the symbolism behind one school of Tantra is that sexual energy is the Kundalini, is the serpent power, is the divine power. If you dissipate it in orgasm, you lose it. If you conserve it, you raise the power, raise the orgiastic feeling, but don't have orgasm. Instead, direct the sexual energy up the spine into the head, you'll get illumination. And many tantrics practice this way. They uh, uh, use the intense fascination of sexual arousal to be the instrument, the incentive for intense concentration on each other. So that you look with the whole, uh, you see, supposing you look into the other partner's eyes and your interest in the other person's eyes is coupled with sexual fascination. You have colossal power of concentration to look and look and look and look and look and look into those eyes. Now, if you concentrate long enough, you go into trance, and if you know how to handle trance, you go through trance into samadhi and so on and so on. If you read the Kama Sutra and how their ideas of having intercourse with one's wife is fantastic, it's a ritual. And if you really go about it, you fix her up first with sandal paste and brushes and things. You make her look like the goddess. You decorate her with all the appurtenances, the bangles, the bells, and all the things the goddess is supposed to have. And she likewise to her lord makes puja and offers flowers and incense and so on. And they go about it slowly, slowly, slowly. This is not a fair you toss off in a couple of minutes. It takes a whole day.